Hello, it's James from XRobot. Yes, it's another robot project. We're going to come back to Robot X. Now, this is a project I did a while ago. The plan was to basically make a walking robot that could dress up as different sci-fi characters, whatever was in favour. We did Bender from Futurama, and we also did a bit of Spider-Man. Now, I'm not sure Spider-Man's that popular now, so basically, I'm going to take all the Spider-Man stuff off and go back to making a walking robot again and get that to work the best I can. Now, what I actually want to do is open source this, so I want to give away all of the CAD and all of the code as a true open source, which means you can modify it, redistribute it, commercialize it if you want to, as long as you publish any changes, basically, and publish that source. And that's pretty much how 3D printers work and lots of other open source hardware and software. So we did have the robot working quite well. We had it walking along um, a couple of times, basically, after experimenting with it for ages and ages. The main problem I had with this build was that I never did a kinematic model, so I never worked out a mathematical model for all of its joint positions and angles. Most of my code involved reading sensors and fudging a few numbers, adding some numbers on here and there to try and get it to be stable, which isn't really a great approach. So what I want to do in the long term is start another robot project, which will be coming up soon, which will be built properly. It's going to have four legs though, a bit like the Boston Dynamics dog robot, but that again is going to be open source. So I'm going to actually do a robot that has a kinematic model, a mathematical model, does all of that code properly, um, and then that will be open source as well. And if I learn a lot from that, I might come back to this robot or another two-legged walking robot. Of course, that's much harder to achieve. So we've got a couple of features to add to this robot. I want to put better foot pressure sensing on, and I'm going to do that in this episode. We're going to play around with the code a bit more, get it working the best we can, and then I'm going to give it all away. The first thing I need to do is take off this Spider-Man head and some of these cosmetics, Spider-Man's hands. We had a web shooter hand on one hand, and we had a sort of dexterous hand on the other hand. And we also had a drone launcher at one point, so we're going to take all that Spider-Man stuff off and just get back to the core robot and see what we can do with it. So nice as Spider-Man's head was, obviously I don't own the rights to Spider-Man, so I can't open source that part, and that's the main reason we're removing all of those panels before we make the project open source. I am, however, leaving the head turret in the CAD, which rotates, and it's got two servos at the front that push rods with the pivot at the back to make a pan, tilt, and yaw mechanism, so we could put sensors or something else on there. At the back of the robot, we've got this additional Mega 2650, which basically controlled all the servos. It was just operating as a servo driver to control the hands and the head and those features, so pretty much all this stuff on the back panel can go. The actual Arduino controlling the walking robot is an Arduino Due, which is 84 megahertz and 32 bits, so it's a bit more powerful than the normal 8-bit Arduinos. Have a look back in the series for this build to find out how it works and what all the wires do. So those are Spider-Man's hands. One had uh, all of the fingers moved and the thumb moved and there was a video just about making that sort of dexterous hand. It's actually not a bad robot hand. I might use that in another video. The other one, of course, was the web shooter, which actually shot the web. It had that mechanism that only operated two fingers to do that Spider-Man web shooting pose. So we're just going to leave it with stumps for now. Of course, the elbows worked and they had that rotation as well. We might stick something on there to give it a bit more length, but it's actually easier to walk without that huge mass wobbling around because the arms are a bit wobbly anyway, so it probably needed a redesign. Well, that seems to still work. So the last time I had this walking, I actually added these force sensitive resistors. And there's some rubber pads on the feet here, and I put a force sensitive resistor in between the rubber pad and the metal. And that meant it could sense whether its foot was on the ground or not. Uh, previously, I never bothered with that, and it only really dawned on me that the pressure on your feet is quite important to walking uh, quite late on in this series. However, this is a bit rubbish. The other one's broken, or I've taken it for something. Force sensitive resistors aren't really very linear, so. What I did with the Exosuit series was actually made my own pressure sensors for moving the suit when I moved, and I used Hall effect sensors and magnets. So what we're actually going to do is come back and put some Hall effect sensor based spring pressure sensors on the feet of Robot X in the corners, and we're going to wire those in and see if we can get some slightly better results. And the plan is to make a thing like this. So it's made of 3D prints, it's basically two spring things, and that's going to bolt onto the 2020 on the front of the foot there. And that means I can measure the distance as there's pressure on each corner of the foot. So we'll have one on the front, one on the back, and obviously two on each leg. So we're going to put a Hall effect sensor in that little notch. There's a recessor, a magnet, 
So that'll work exactly the same as the exosuit sensors to just measure the distance there and therefore measure whether the foot's on the ground. And if the foot tips over, of course, one will measure more than the other. And that'll be able to tell me uh, basically the position of the foot on the ground. So those are assembled. I've got bolts through there, which just go into the plastic. Obviously it's held rigid with the bolts, the three other bolts that go into the 2020. I fitted my magnets in the bottom there. So those seem pretty robust. We're gonna fit those to the robot before we put in the Hall effect sensors, which are these tiny things check that mechanically that looks like it works okay. So I fitted those to the fronts and backs of the foot and as you can see obviously as the foot will come off the ground these things will spring up and that seems to be working pretty well. Obviously as I said if the foot tilts one will tilt more than the other and that means that we can measure that angle. We've got those on the front and back of the feet. So the next thing is to put the Hall effect sensors in and wire the eight analog ins into somewhere. The challenge I now have is that my Arduino Due has all of the analog ins occupied. In all fairness two of them are for those um, force sensitive resistors we had on the feet before but all eight of them are occupied with the feedback pots which are all over the thing and that only leaves two more. So we're going to have to do something else for those other eight analog ins. In the front of each leg however I have an inertial measurement unit that measures the sideways tilt of that leg. So that's another Arduino that's sending serial data to the Arduino Due over one of the serial buses. There's one in each leg and one in the body. So what I could do is use the analog ins on there to read the data from each of those four foot sensors on this leg send that along with the serial data to the Due and do that on each leg. I'm using Bill Porter's Easy Transfer library to send that data to the main Arduino and this is the serial plotter in Arduino. So the top lines are the data from the pressure sensors. The bottom is the inertial measurement unit. So if I get the robot and wobble it around a bit, foot to foot, we can see those foot uh, sensors where it takes steps coming off the ground and going back on. If I lift it all up, they both go up and down again and we can see the inertial measurement unit on the bottom line there as I'm tilting the robot. So that's just using timing, it's not using the foot sensors yet, so it's doing what it was doing before I had the foot sensors at all. So it's just using timing and well, hey, and sometimes it loses it and that's because it's just using a bit of inertial measurement unit to try and work out roughly where the centre point is to take the next step but it doesn't know if its feet are on the ground or not there. So I've written some code now which basically tells me how long each foot has been on the ground. So all I've done is added up all those foot sensors for each foot and I've written a little algorithm here basically that resets the clock. So as the foot hits the ground it resets the clock, tells me what the interval is since the last reset and if it comes off the ground then it basically sets a flag so that it can't get reset because the foot's always on the ground if that makes any sense and I've done that for the left and right foot. So now if we bring up a console we can see that we've got the data there. So the left hand columns in both of these columns are the actual pressure sensors and I thresholded them. You'll notice one I thresholded for a thousand, the other for 900 because the sum of those is slightly different. And the time on the right is how long it is since the foot's been on the ground in milliseconds, which is quite a long time uh, because it's standing there on the ground. So uh, if I go and jostle the robot now, we can see those clocks resetting. So let's just pick those feet up off the ground alternately. So we should be able to see those times resetting and it measuring how long each foot's been on the ground since it hits the ground and we can use that to make it more stable. So we'll just give that a test. I've obviously just set those numbers to an arbitrary amount of time. In fact, it's 100 milliseconds, which I just made up. And the thresholding's not quite accurate. Obviously, all of those sensors add up to different things on each side of the leg, so we could fine tune that as well. But it seems to be pretty stable and pretty repeatable. It's much better than it was, apart from wandering to the left. So we'll put that back, see if it works again. Seems all right. It's not totally great, but it's much better than it was without any foot pressure sensing at all. Yep, yeah, looks pretty good. It keeps wandering this way, as you can see. So I actually thought there was a slope in the floor. I tried turning it around, but then it just wanders the other way. So it's not that. So I've tuned up some other values to try and stop it doing that with those timers, uh, some of the foot angles and some other things. And we'll see that that does much better. So what I was going to do was get the inertial measurement unit in each leg, get that foot pressure and alter that ankle tip so that we could try and keep an equal pressure on the ground at all times with both feet. Um, but actually it doesn't look like I need to do that, but I have got those four sensors. 
So that is something we could do in the future. So I was going to actually try and make it walk with those foot pressure sensors, but I don't think it's going to work any better than it did before. Also, my code's now become so convoluted, I don't think I can easily do it. I am going to publish code from when it did walk before, but without the pressure sensors though, and the code as it is now for all of the things. And there's several Arduinos in here. There's some partner with each inertial measurement unit, there's some in the arms, there's some in the remote, and there's obviously the main Arduino in the body there, as well as one that translates the remote receiving signals, um, which is another 3.3 volt Arduino, because there's not enough serial bus. So it has to receive over serial from Bluetooth and then transfer that data through I squared C into the I squared C port on the DUA. So there's quite a lot to it. So this really shouldn't be your first Arduino project. If you can't read the code and find out what pins are wired to where and you can't follow the series and understand what's going on, I really don't recommend you try building this. In fact, I don't actually recommend anyone try building this. If I were going to do this again, I'd probably do it totally differently. The first thing you should at least do is rewrite all the software or at least take out everything in the main loop and rewrite that because it's pretty much, as I said, not how robotics should be done. It's very experimental. It was a research and development project, really. I wasn't really expecting to make a finished product. And basically, I've just hacked numbers together to try and make it work, which pretty much works. So what am I publishing? Well, I'm going to be giving away the CAD as a step file, not an STL, because STLs are really hard to modify. It's actually a solid model. So you can go and put that into any CAD package. It doesn't have to be Fusion 360. It could be SolidWorks or something else. And you can actually go and modify that design, extract the individual pieces for 3D printing, or completely redesign it if you want to. And as I say, I'm putting all the code up for all of the Arduinos. Now, it's really important to watch the whole series from the beginning if you want to build anything like this. But as I say, I don't recommend you copy it exactly as it is. But please be inspired by it uh, and use that as inspiration for your own project. Now, I'm putting the code up on GitHub. So I'll put the link in the description to the video. The CAD will also be there as well. But basically, I don't want loads of code submits. I don't, I'm not going to be able to test everyone's code against the robot. So please don't send me your code. But please feel free to fork it and go and create your own. And that's basically the purpose of it. So it's really important to say that all my projects like this are funded through Patreon and that's really important because it gives me budget to build this sort of thing and do some experimentation and that's how the Open Dog project is going to be funded and most of my other projects like the Exosuit. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards including a live stream with me and all my videos early. So that's about it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates on some of the other robotics projects. Alright, that's all for now.